Hello and welcome to Access Chat. We're delighted to welcome Rene Perkins today to be with us. Rene is the CEO of CityMass. CityMass is a mobility as a service platform aimed at uh, persons with disabilities. Um, great to have you with us. Transportation and being able to get around is a you know, really key topic for our audience. So um, it's, it's really exciting to hear what you're doing. So can you tell us a little bit about City Mass and how you came to be working in in this space. So, um, City Mass is a, um, a platform uh, using an intelligent algorithm and machine learning techniques, needs, uh, such as accessibility needs, uh, in order to provide that uh, optimization routing, booking and payment, all from an end to end service on one single platform. And the kind of a higher vision of um, what City Master is trying to do is um, facilitate that uh, spontaneous, inclusive, and also uh, a very efficient travel for disabled people in smart cities. So um, it's using machine learning techniques to take into account pack crowdsource accessibility information such as lift out of service, um, accessible space is not available, or um, simply um, the disabled uh, uh, toilets or facilities that are not um, in operation. And that kind of things get feedback to the community. So the platform would uh, really just create that community feel where everybody be able to contribute to everybody's uh, journey in every single journey. Uh, so for example, if um, I live in a station that's out of service and, and the wheelchair users it's, uh, it, at the station, they will be able to crowdsource that information back to the platform for the next journey uh, on the platform to avoid the same mistake happen. Um, that will really save people's time as well as um, the stress and anxiety come with it because if you are on your route to a meeting uh, or an interview or whatever it is, then you're running late um, because of the informa inaccurate information or unavailable um, real-time information um, that's uh, resulting um, that kind of emotional um, stress. So that's a that's a, a kind of a, a big idea, a good idea of um, what we're trying to do. And we're primarily focused on two main categories at the moment, which is the mobility impaired uh, people and as well as visually impaired people. But we were extending our service to um, hearing impaired and uh, cognitive impaired um, categories as well. No, as, um, no in, in, in London, there are a few you know, transports for London, they, they provide sources of uh, open data that can be used by yep. the different organizations. They're also um, sites like Airbnb or TripAdvisor, they you know they have areas where you are able to go and identify if uh, a venue is accessible or not. Are you using also? Uh, uh, are you trying to source information from these type of uh, entities, or you are relying more on user feedback? Uh, we we would like to uh, have a combination of both because we believe that there are some pros and cons of both information. So in terms of crowdsource information, that um, there is a, a disadvantage in a way that potentially the information might not be um, accurate or, um, or or the right information. Um, so um, we will seek to really use whatever open data is necessary, such as the TFL open API data, in real time cancellations and delays, and um, potentially look into the um, social media side of announcement in terms of real life events such as um, the entrance in uh, Bond Street, entrance B in Bond Street is closed today, for example, uh, to, uh, to kind of um, provide that feedback into the algorithm so that the algorithm take into account that piece of information um, to optimize that routing for the next journey on the platform. Okay, so if, uh, let's say, you know, if someone is listening to us, let's say, and that was, oh, well, um, I have responsibility to manage an airport and responsibility for accessibility, and I really want to create a good experience. Are you, are you 
encourage them to reach you out or you are the ones you know you are the ones who are going to do that type of activity okay there's an organization here transport organization that is really accessible we are going to reach them out so how that communication uh, workflow will work um if i understand your um your question correctly so how it works in city mass is where once you set up the profile indicating the type of disabilities their preferences no if if i if i manage an airport okay so, you manage an airport okay and i have my i, I want uh, to make sure that people that are traveling to my airport have a good experience in terms of uh, accessibility and I, I really putting the effort on making sure that the, the all my space and all the journey that people do in the airport is accessible okay mm -hmm. so how should i reach you out or you are the ones mapping those sites who have a high quality of accessibility uh, in your platform so there are already informations that uh, basic informations already in the platform where um, the locations of disabled toilet, example, or the uh, accessible uh, entrance uh, is, etc. So those kind of infrastructural information is there uh, already. But on top of that, um, the users on the platform be able to crowdsource and feed that back. They are um, subjective views, if you like, say they're um, the staff from this particular airport uh, is extremely helpful. Um, they provide extra and some, uh, direct me to the right place or, um, or, or negative kind of a feedbacks where the staff wasn't really interested, wasn't engaging, wasn't listening to what my, what my questions is or, or my needs is. Um, and that kind of information will kind of um, be taken into account, depends on whether that's a kind of alert or an opinion subjective information um, back to the platform in order to have various different ways. So, um, so it depends on what kind of, uh, it's a combination of both to answer to some of your questions. Renee, uh, welcome to the program. We're, we're um, honored to have you here. Uh, I, I'm i trying to wrap my head around it. So I, I'm going to st um, step back for a second. So I'm assuming that I have an app that um, I put on my iPhone or on my Android or my tablet and then you have these algorithms and the you know the crowdsourcing and everything but am i is that the right assumption i mean how does somebody get engaged in this how does it how what is the practical uh way that you know people get engaged and i would also assume one more thing renee that um even if i'm a person that doesn't have a visible disability that you know, but, you know, maybe I'm somebody that cares about the community or somebody that is part of the community that, but I don't need these services that I could also engage and be part of the solution. So that's, that's an excellent question. Sorry, I, maybe I, I haven't made it clear from right at the beginning where uh, City Mass platform is a platform, which is a back end algorithm to provide that kind of optimal uh, routing and booking payment services for um, people with disabilities, but also it will have a user interface for app. People can interact um, with a self adapted UX UI journey based on the type of uh, disabilities they have when they set up their profile. So it could be a voiceover, it could be um, kind of visual control. Uh, depends on their preferences as well. That can have both, depends on the degrees of. Um, visual impairment they have. Um, so um, that's that's how we will encourage um, the users to really engage with the community, not only be able to get from um, the information, benefit from the information that other people provide um, in a geolocation information, which is specific to the, where they're currently are, and, and, and also the routes on the, on the, the route to the destinations they put in. Um, so, um, so that's how we will, um, you know, create that community to help each other out in terms of um, overcome that daily travel obstacles um, for people with disabilities, whether it's, you know, just a simple kind of confirmation that you are right, that Lyft is our service, or uh, more in-depth um, information such as, um, um, don't go to that station today. It, it's a it's nightmare. Um, the entrance is uh, constantly changing. We don't know what's happening. It's too crowded and um, two entrances closed, for example. So that's 
the first question. I think the second question really made me have a big smile because um, because that's exactly um, the point that we want to make that this app, although is really taking into consideration for disabled people's needs, uh, a lot of accessibility information uh, will be on it, but it also allows uh, able body to crowdsource back the accessibility information and encourage um, the people on the platform that may not have a disability or may not uh, be impacted by that particular problem on their roots uh, to give it back to um, the community to help avoiding problems. Um, so, um, able body be able able body people will be able to download the app. They'll be able to go, um, you know, same as optimizations uh, uh, of their routing when they're putting their starting point and endpoints. And then there's uh, various different options of um, cross modal transportation, whether it's buses, trips, tubes, trains, taxi, share rides, uh, and that type of thing. And um, they will be able to choose which options they like to go to based on their preferences, whether it's uh, time, uh, press or um, cost conscious or, um, you know, weather or sustainable, sustainable transportation conscious um, uh, options for them. And um, through the whole journey, and it depends on the location, it depends on what the problem is when they come up, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a dynamic view. Um, it will pop up in the screen uh, whenever they come across something that somebody report, they can Almost like a slight like ways. Um, I was going to uh, say that. I was going to say it reminds like, me of ways, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's like ways um, for accessible travel for disabled people. Um, but um, the um, able-bodied people will be able to contribute to that because there will be a system to encourage um, good citizen behavior, uh, if you like. You know. I was thinking about ways, and um, I know that Google now owns ways, and um, it, it it's interesting the because I use both of them, and uh, sometimes they confuse me because they have different things to say, and they, they confuse me as I'm traveling. But that's me. But you know what I think yeah. is interesting beyond, the, the, you know what you're doing is pretty powerful and to me it's what the future looks like but I think something that as you're talking about it that I was thinking that would be so cool as a byproduct is that often we don't understand each other's journeys and so I can I really understand the journey of a person that is blind navigating their way through a London airport you know I can I've traveled with many of my friends that are blind but I think this also has the opportunity to help us better understand each other. So if I'm a person that's deaf and I use sign language, but you know, the, the captioning isn't working on the airplane or I, I can think of other things or the emergency information. And it just seems like this could, this continues to help bring us together so that we understand. Um, I don't want you to look at me and, and feel sorry for me, but the reality, if you can understand my journey, and, and I'll give you an example. I travel often with my husband and my daughter who both now have cognitive disabilities. And so the, the need for me to understand what is ahead of me, what yeah. in my journey is going to be an obstacle would be so helpful, not only to me, to, but my husband and my daughter. And so I, yeah. I just see, all this really powerful abilities for us to understand each other also. So I just want yeah, to make that no, no, that's really. definitely, Yeah, there's the definitely, um, there are definitely two, you touch, I think you touched two good elements of it. One is the, um, one is the, the data that we're collecting. The other one is um, the community side of things where, um, the, well, it's the data that we're collecting includes the insights of the pain points that the end user is encounter, encountering when they're traveling. And that obviously in your specific example will provide a bit more advice in, in, in um, insights in terms of what kind of maybe idea of assistance or idea of awareness of some the difficulties they might encounter or not showing, not be able to uh, demonstrate or, or, or express. 
um, and hence help you to better understand better how better um, connect you like um, with, with your, your, your children. So the, the data is so valuable in a way that that's one part of it. The powerful data can also enable us to share with, um, say, city planning um, authorities um, to enable them to really understand which area is really a um, problematic area. Do we need the bus stop to be a little bit more or to move that side to another or to really Think about efficient travel in the city for disabled people as well as able-bodied people. So that that's a, that's what that's another really powerful or goosebump data um, um, usage um, um, that come out from the city mass platform. And also on top of that, obviously you'll be able to I'll be able to help the um, the city of our London. Um, EFL, Transport for London, um, to help them to uh, better service their customer when they're in their uh, tube stations and train stations as well. So yeah, that's just a very two um, key pain points, uh, key points that you touched there. Yeah, I think you know, it's 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 one of those things where we can see lots of benefits from from multiple sides uh, when. We're looking from the transport provider side. You know, they have a need to, uh, at a basic level, get people through their facilities as quickly as possible. And when we have issues for persons with disabilities, not only does it impact that person, but it's also bottom line impacting them because they then end up the system gums up around the person as well. So it's it's really bad for the the user with a disability because not only are they frustrated that they're not able to um, get to where they need to go to, they then also are made to feel uncomfortable because what's happening around them is that people are getting frustrated. This is the nature of human beings that, you know, when we're in commute mode, we don't really care about anyone else. You know, it's like, I'm going from A to B and get out of my way um, that they don't want to know about the cause of the delay. So we, we want to, you know, help remove those kind of problems, make it easier for everyone to travel. So that data is precious. I think that, you know, that, that real time feedback, you know, you need the loop between uh, ideally what you want is that feedback loop between the, the users reporting, you know, um, what it's like for them experiencing their transit through the station or their their journey in traffic or their bus ride or train ride or whatever um, back to the service provider and, and equally the service provider can then use that data to look at how they can remove those bottlenecks in future because again time is money you know uh, if you're trying to get people onto a train you know each one of those persons on the train is of a, some kind of financial value to you. Um, I, I'm being very cold and no, economic no. about it, but it's absolutely true. This is how you know people are, <laughs> are running their businesses or, or running their services. So, so, so that that's really important. Um, but on the plus side, also, you know, you want the economic empowerment of allowing people with disabilities to go about their business, be that credible consumer. You know, being able to, you know, the, the access to transport gives people access to go and spend their money that they have, go and engage in services and everything else. So it's, it's an incredibly important thing. And yes, Deborah mentioned WAVE. Um, and you're also seeing this, to a certain extent, open data um, being collected right now. So I, I've noticed recently, um, I've stopped using the rail booking apps because they don't update quick enough. Um, but but Google's asking you questions like, ah, you know, you're on the train, which carriage are you on, and how crowded is it, you know? So so that kind of that kind of data, you know, and 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 you can see that the trains are also now um, putting in information that it's less crowded in the front of the train. So you're, you know, you're all standing there like this, and you realise that actually, if I just go down a bit further, I might even get a seat. Um, 
or there may be a wheelchair place. Uh, yeah. And all this kind of stuff is is really, um, you know, that that data is useful because at the moment what what happens is, as you will probably well know, people roll up, and they're taking a chance with public transport or. They can't roll up and they have to wait and book and, and some people have to, you know, wait for two days to book a train. You know, if you're a wheelchair user, you, you can't necessarily just turn up and get a train ticket. Yeah. You know, like anyone else, you, you, you've got to book it. And you've got to, not only have you got to book it, but you don't have the, you know, the equal experience because you, you know, you, you've got to wait for two days. So that's frustrating. How, how, how's that going to give you a spontaneous life? So, so appreciate the, the spontaneity element of, of, of what you're trying to do. You're also trying to sort of do the stuff around um, being the intermediary, right? So you're, you're doing the, 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 trying to stitch together the, the various different transportation services. So yeah. how do you do that? So that's a very, uh, very, um... Good question, and, and, and the complexity of this project, we, we never really understand, underestimate that. And obviously, as a um, mobility as a service company, uh, and especially when we were targeting um, vulnerable audience, like um, it's whatever. I think collaboration is such a key word that we cannot overstate the importance of that. Um, and especially be able to collaborate with all the public transportation authorities and, and, and London planning um, offices. Um, and that's the key to actually make a success of it in order to have that efficient um, transportation moving, moving people around from A to B in a city. Um, so uh, it's um, a lot, as, uh, as Antonio mentioned before, a, a, the good things about London is a lot of um, data open source and by API, such as the, um, the public transport TFL data, um, they have an open um, data culture where you can utilize a lot of them to um, be part of the platform. And other kind of private uh, buses and also trains, and it's a matter of actually um, discussions and collaborations for them to be able to share the data, which will be a two way relationship where we'll be able to help them. To, um, to better service their customer, um, whether it's a, a tra train station or, or the train service on the train itself, or getting on and off the train from one station to another. So um, I think the, the 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 point that you, you touch upon, is if we go back to kind of business side of things, kind of non-human elements of it, um, really what we're trying to do is um, to make travel efficient. Now, we have two focuses. One is um, the B2C part, which is the consumer part, which is the end user part that we, um, the end uh, results we want to achieve from the app and our platform is to be able to help them to, um, to achieve that spontaneous, inclusive and efficient, that's important word, um, travel from A to B in Smart City. But we also have a focus on B2B as well, that collaboration with the public transportation services, well as private taxis and, and share rights companies, where they be able to uh, offer, offer their, uh, their services to um, our users on a platform. To achieve that in Smart Cities, it's got to be cross modal transportation, so it's got to be even within one type of transportation, it's got to be across different companies, including taxis. Because, um, for example, I know Uber is very big, you know, it's everywhere, but not necessarily. If, if when, it's, when you're outside London, you might not have Uber as uh, frequently as the local um, cab taxi companies that might be able to um, take you to places quicker and faster. So, yep, yeah, so that is. Well, two, um, two, two good points that you mentioned there. Yeah, yeah I can, well, living outside of London, I can attest to the fact that Uber doesn't really exist in the sticks. Yeah, in, in, in the countryside, you, 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 you load up Uber and you have to shrink the map by an awful lot before you start seeing any cars. So, yeah, we're a long way from, from that. So, yeah, it does need to link up with 
the, the the local transportation providers to to really get yeah you know, to to become useful. Um, so, 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 and and of course, then you're kind of again reliant on them having data about their fleet. You know, if it's a taxi company, they may have a number of accessible taxis and some less accessible. So so again, it's it's a it's not a a, a trivial exercise in gathering all of this this data, is it? So. Um, how many of how many of, are you um, in city maps right now, and and you know, what are you, you know what are your plans, and you know, which bits are you you know doing first? If you can you know, yeah. tell us a bit more about how you're going to roll it out. So uh, in a true style of city maps and true style of me, actually, we we dive in head first. Um, so we will like to launch in London, and we believe we'll be able to make it. Um, a success in London, we'll be able to make it anywhere else in um, the uh, other cities within the UK and, and, and other international cities, in fact. So um, we're in conversation with TFL on many, many different levels, uh, from the operational side, the customer service, to um, the, uh, um, the independent accessibility board um, advisor uh, sitting on TFL, um, was um, is uh, one of our advisors, um, which is Cameron, the CEO of Disability Trade UK. And um, TFL is a very key strategic partners of ours because they not only run train tubes, overgrounds, buses, but also um, they have um, taxi licenses as well. So they do have um, cover cross mode of transportation. In fact, they do also cover the bulk service as well um, in, in the tents. So um, in, that, in, that, in the, that perspective, so they are very key uh, elements of our partnership and um, they um, that's cover quite a lot of the transportation. But uh, we also believe from a private taxi companies that it's a business decision. If we'll be able to bring in users to, um, to demonstrate you know, the increase of revenue. <laughs> Obviously, that's a business case to be jumping on board with, uh, with, with our platforms. Uh, no, um, in order to make sure that uh, you are able to deliver a good service mm -hmm. and the users have a good experience, you, you need a lot of data, okay? And you need a lot of input. So as we treat the data, the best everything will work. Of course, sometimes you might have better, sometimes less data with high quality that also helps your algorithms. So, but today we have so many challenges about data and privacy, okay? And uh, I, I, I was looking for, you know, at GDPR and all regulations around it. But do you see any constraints in relation to how that could uh, somehow make your model less effective? with all the questions that are all GDPR, or you are able to adapt? Or do you see sometimes there's a collision between, okay, data protection and the user experience for this type of users that could allow them to have an experience without any sort of interference? Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a very good question in terms of data privacy, uh, personal data privacy. That's a very key thing that we we'll take very seriously in CityMass. So um, there is there will be no personal data exchange across the platform. They will um, there, there will be element of a community and social environment, uh, social elements of the platform. People are allowed to interact, uh, where actually ask for help or confirmations of whether the lifts in that particular station is uh, out of service um, or it was out of service. Is it better? Is it okay now? Type of um, interaction. Um, and they, they may even interact via messages and chat window directly with each other. But then, obviously, the, all the uh, information, personal information stored in our database, in our, in our platform, will not be shared with anybody else, not even third party. It, it will, um, when we allow, it, when we are enabling or facilitating that kind of connection among um, the users in the platform, um, the, you know, the, it will be anonymized. Kind of a, 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 a way of 
So, so, so building on that, so obviously there comes a point where you have to do the, the sort of handover to the customer to to your service provider, and, and so you you you'll have worked out the customer preference for mode of transport, accessibility needs, etc. There needs to be a point where the driver of the taxi needs to know that kind of data in order to give good customer service. So the yeah. how how do you handle that and, and, and are you gathering, you know, you know ex I guess you have to sort of gather explicit permissions that that yeah you know, that, that would cover that off. Yeah, so yeah, so right at the beginning, when you set up a profile, once you're indicating, you shy what kind of information you would like to review, um, and and it, it it will not be personal information. It will also just be um, the necessary, absolute bare minimum necessary information that is needed for um, the service providers to provide a service. For example, um, the, a wheelchair user needs a taxi for the last mile after um, he or she got off the train uh, to get, get to this destination, then um, the absolutely um, minimal information is that they, the, the other tax, the service provider will need to know the pickup station, uh, the pickup uh, points, uh, which is not personal, uh, and uh, also the kind of facilities they need to be able to provide that service. For example, they need a RAM. That would that would be that kind of information, or um, they uh, they require some assistance to um, to get on off for um, for vision impaired um, customers, for example. And 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 it, it's not um, the type of disability information that we'll be sharing. It will be what's needed um, to provide that information, if you like, just from the other angle. Right, that, that that makes sense. So, um, and, and I'm assuming that uh, you could essentially, through this process, help educate service providers on how to be more inclusive. Exactly. Excellent. So, um, so we're pretty much at the end of our half hour. It's been a real pleasure. Where can people find out about more about City Mass? So, you've got a website. So yeah, they can go on to our website, which is citymas.io. That's our website. And it's currently under uh, maintenance at the moment, for, um, server and maintenance, but it will be, uh, actually it's up now. Um, so you can find us on the website, citymas.io, but you can also find us on LinkedIn, on Twitter, Twitter is quite vibrant, and you can also find us on Facebook as well. It's all under citymas um, handle. Yeah, yeah. So it's city and then M A, -A S. That's Fantastic. right. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Um, so we need to thank our supporters, Barclays and my Clear Text for helping keep the lights on and keeping us captioned, keeping us inclusive. Uh, it's been a real pleasure, Renee. We look forward to you joining us on Twitter on on Tuesday night. Thank you very much. It's been great. Thank you. With you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.